All right. Good morning. Uh, my presentation will be on the, the Lucas Critique. It was put forward by Robert Lucas in 1976. The Lucas Critique was a uh, deconstructionist critique. It didn't offer anything um, co constructive as a solution to the, uh, the, uh, the initial problems discovered. But um, since then, it's caused a lot of debate and people have been looking for a solution to this critique or whether the critique is even valid to macroeconomic theory. So Robert Lucas held that, uh, at least in uh, the 70s and still today, depending on who you ask, that macroeconomics was had inappropriate foundations. It relied purely on econometric models that assumed behavior remained constant over a given time period. Now, Robert Lucas's model holds that it would be more appropriate to, to realize that policies change uh, microeconomic behavior. And our macroeconomics builds up the foundation for our macro. This has uh, also been called the, uh, the Cobra effect. For example, um, the, the, uh, the Cobra effect comes from India, where the, the, the British government, who was ruling at the time, put in a, a policy stating we will pay anyone um, a given amount of money, provided they bring in Cobras. And the, the goal of this policy was to decrease the Cobra population. Um, but what they found after a given amount of time was that individuals began breeding the Cobras killing them, bringing them in for money. So they ended up with a higher population of domesticated cobras, um, despite what the, the initial attentions were. So Robert Lucas, uh, in his essay, um, in his 1976 essay, gives us a general systems of equations to, to describe the motion of the economy. Um, he puts this as f of x of y, e, and theta. So our x variable, our first variable, describes exogenous variables. So variables outside of our economy that may, that may affect its general path. And then we have our our uh, y variables, which describe our, our state variables, um, things that are integral to the economy itself, um, its structure of given quantities of goods, um, labor, um, information symmetries, perhaps. Um, e is our exo exogenous, randomly distributed shocks. Um, so this uh, assumes real business cycle theory, which supposes that um, shocks from uh, shocks in the form of um, technology or unexpected events cause recessions um, and booms, uh, which contrasts Keynesian theory of um, you know sticky wages, um, lower demand, and Austrian theory, which uh, supposes that um, Austrian business cycle theory, which supposes a uh, credit expansion, um, and then catalytic error made on the part of entrepreneurs. Our last variable, theta, describes individual decision rules. How do policies implemented, which would obviously affect our y variable, um, but the introduction of theta changes the function as a whole. Theta relies upon changes in y, and theta isn't a, uh, wasn't a variable really applied um, before people began to try to reform dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models. Um, 
He also assumes uh, rational expectations, so people take in all available data. Um, if uh, the implication of a new tax, for example, people will consume less of it. If people are purchasing less of it, the government gains less um, revenue than before. So the projections made by our systems may not be entirely accurate because individuals will change in response to whatever is put into place. Now, a few, well, quite a few, um, quite a few academics either find that the changes are so small, as in the case of uh, Neil R. Erickson, um, who in his paper believes that theta, the, the, the way theta affects our equation is small and insignificant, we do not have to take into account. Other, others, such as um, uh, Professor Xavier, I believe who is uh, currently a fellow at Harvard, and he rejects the idea that macroeconomics requires microeconomic foundations, but rather the macroeconomics should have behavioral economic foundations. Now, what's the difference? Microeconomics assumes certain rules, laws of demand, um, uh, laws of demand, marginal utility, diminishing returns, um, yeah, or, ordinal subjective value. Um, he believes that that is all unnecessary for our macroeconomic conditions because the way people behave psycho psychologically and the way people behave economically can come out somewhat different. So for example, people, if they do not know of the policy implemented, may not change their behavior, in which case we could assume that our equation is correct, um, without data, that is. If, if uh, individuals do not have complete information, um, if individuals have certain expectations of what will come after the policy, or if they have even misconceptions about what the policy does, um, their behavior, they, 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 they won't behave in the way that microeconomics might suggest. So then we would have to take in um, psychological considerations but this is only so this that particular paper Xavier's paper finds that microeconomic foundations is the wrong answer um, so he he believes in using sparse dynamic programming as uh, the as a foundation for macroeconomic models uh, well behavioral economics is not um, Necessarily, it's, uh, it's new and exciting, but it doesn't comprise conventional economic theory. Um, Olivier Blanchard is a French economist, used to work for the IMF, is currently a professor at MIT. Uh, he is a, a new Keynesian, but he still believes that the, the Lucas critique has some bite to it, which can be seen in, uh, in the Volcker deflation. Um, there is a, for the first few years uh, as the money supply has been cut from 1980 to 1981, um, you see about the change you would expect, although there's some error in the forecasting models, but in 1982, um, a, a substantial amount of error comes into the forecasting models. And there's this large slide um, quickening um, in, in the deflation process in a way that he argues markets have not accounted for yet. Um, so when, when these markets realized the, the extent to which the deflation policy was being carried out and what the 
what was actually going to occur as a result of that policy. Um, hastened somewhat more dramatic effect that couldn't be realized based on past economic data that had been gathered the previous the previous few years. Um, so even even individuals, even economists who are not neoclassicists or um, what you could call it, Chicagans, um, still find that the Lucas critique is correct. And even those who um, argue that the, the Lucas critique is incorrect, such as Neil R. Erickson, argue that it is not true of all models. Right? So they cannot say that policy implications will not change individual decision behavior. They, they are unable to, to say that. Rather, they argue that the Lucas critique is a probability theorem. It is true within certain models, depending upon the uh, depending upon super exogenous behavior. Um, so it's uh, we you would need to know the like the uh, I suppose, suppose you could say the what what would the reaction of our independent agents be? How and this goes back to the the behavioral economics, right? Um, there, they cannot assume perfect information, assume information asymmetries. Um, so even even critics of the Lucas critique, we are, we are arguing that it might only be true sometimes. Um, so clearly, the the Lucas critique has had a profound impact on the way that economists understand the very tools that they use to um, gather and uh, gather information about um, current economic conditions and even individuals such as uh, Neil Erickson um, are they they recognize the importance of Lucas critique has even though they don't believe it to be necessarily valid but is the Lucas critique valid does it hold water now, macroeconomics does not exist. It, it cannot be possible without microeconomics. There is purposeful human behavior. And to understand that at the ground level, methodol methodological individualism is necessary. Um, there is no collective hive mind. People behave as actors, as individuals. And... When, when the rules of the game change, people change with it. Um, now, where, where will the Lucas critique bring economics? Um, some people um, believe um, if, we, if we recognize that the Lucas critique is valid, then it brings us to a Misesian conclusion. Um, one that says all mathematical economics is invalid. We cannot trust the answers we are given because economics is a priori. There are other individuals such as Richard Day, who is a um, mathematical economist, but he bases a lot of his um, theories on nonlinear systems, um, complex dynamic systems with the influence of chaos theory. So a lot of people have taken the Lucas critique and they've run off with it in different directions. Um, but one thing is certain. The, whatever an individual's perception of the Lucas critique is, whether it means that we need microeconomic foundations or whether you're New Keynesian and you believe that the Lucas critique was only asserting that certain parameters aren't stable, whatever it is, we know it, it's beyond a shadow of doubt how much influence the, the Lucas critique has had. Um, thank you, and that'll conclude my presentation.